Thank you, Senator Blumenthal. Now let me recognize via WebEx, Senator Warren, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you, Mr. Helvey and General Trollinger for being here. The U.S. first sent troops to Afghanistan to root out Al Qaeda and their Taliban hosts and to prevent them from using Afghanistan as a haven to launch another 9-11 type attack. That was 20 years ago. And we accomplished that limited objective rather quickly. But then our military took on more and more responsibility from building an entire Afghan national army from scratch to stemming the drug trade to fighting Afghan government corruption. General Trollinger, we've been training the Afghan security forces for more than a decade now. We've been providing them with the best equipment, with hands-on training, and enabling their operations with American air power. So have the Taliban and associated militant groups had access to that level of assistance? Senator, I, I, don't, I don't believe, if I understand your, correct, your uh, question correctly, uh, they have not, to my knowledge, had any access right. to that sort of. Okay. So, so here we are, uh, that we have given all this assistance to the Afghan army. The Taliban hasn't had that kind of help. And yet the Taliban prevented us from achieving anything close to the security conditions that we've been seeking or else we would have left long ago. So does that suggest it's, it's uh, bigger than just a military problem? Let, let me ask you, Mr. Helvey, does corruption remain an endemic problem in the Afghan government? Uh, Sarah, corruption is, is, is a problem in Afghanistan. Okay, and does the government still lack the public support necessary for it to govern effectively across the country? The Afghan government does maintain uh, you know, popular support. Uh, I think that support, though, is not evenly distributed across the country. I think so that, I take it the answer to the question, does it have public support necessary for it to govern effectively across the country? I take it your answer then is the, no, they do not. Uh, Senator, the, the, the presence of an insurgency, the presence of the Taliban indicates that the Afghan government does not right. have control or popular support everywhere in the country. They do maintain uh, you know, large support within the major population centers uh, and in large parts of the country. But the All right, so they have partial support. Did the Afghan government's inability to govern effectively inspire support amongst the population and give the Taliban space to grow and build support? In other words, the Taliban has done well and is part of the reason for that because the Afghan government has not been able to govern effectively and inspire support among the population across the country? I think there's a, there's a lot of different factors that influence the Taliban's ability to, to maintain its, its presence and support locally. Uh, part of that has to do with, uh, you know, weaknesses within the Afghan government. But part of it also has to do with historical, cultural, tribal, uh, you know, affiliations and relationships. Uh, but to your point, I, I think the, the fact that the, the government uh, has had challenges in, in, in maintaining popular support across the country has created the space for the Taliban uh, to continue to grow and operate and present challenges to the government. But, but look at what you're saying. The root of Afghanistan's problems are political and cultural in nation. The United States military is the most powerful in the world, but our military alone is not responsible nor designed for solving political problems. It's been said before, but it bears repeating again. A conditions-based withdrawal was a recipe for staying forever. And I am glad that President Biden recognized this and has made the long overdue decision to end our military involvement in Afghanistan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much, Senator Warren. Let me recognize via WebEx, Senator Hirono. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.